This digital story is about the career of Kendrick Lamar. This is the story of the music icon who you know today is Kendrick Lamar. The 13 time Grammy winning rapper has created a plethora of hits with his next level lyricism and creativity. He has officially granted himself the status as possibly the best rapper of our generation and is one of the greatest rappers of all time. This will be a look into where he came from and how his career took off, as well as where he is today. Kendrick Lamar Duckworth was born in Compton, California on June 17, 1987, the son of a couple from Chicago. Although not in the gang himself, he grew up around gang members with his closest friends being Westside Pyru Bloods and his father, Kenny Duckworth, being a gangster disciple. His first name was given to him by his mother in honor of American singer-songwriter Eddie Kendricks of The Temptations. He grew up on welfare and in Section 8 housing. In 1995, at the age of eight, Lamar witnessed his idols Tupac Shapur and Dr. Dre filming the music video for their hit single, California Love which proved to be a significant moment in his life. As a child, Lamar attended McNair Elementary and Vanguard Learning Center in Compton Unified School District. He is admitted to being quiet and shy in school, his mother even confirming he was a loner until the age of seven. As a teenager, he attended Centennial High School in Compton, where he was a straight-A student. In 2004, at the age of 16, Lamar released his first full-length project, a mixtape titled Hub City Threat Minor of the Year under the pseudonym KDOT. The mixtape was released under Concrete Jungle Music and garnered local recognition for Lamar. The mixtape led to Lamar securing a recording contract with Top Dog Entertainment, a newly founded indie record label out of Carson, California. He began recording material with the label and subsequently released a 26-track mixtape two years later titled Training Day in 2005. Kendrick eventually earned a co-sign from hip-hop rapper Lil Wayne after being seen on a live TV freestyle battle rapping over Milk Bones' Keep It Real. Lamar eventually decided to stop using the moniker K-Dot after his mixtape C4 and decided to go by his birth name in 2009. That same year, Lamar, along with his TDE label mates J-Rock, Absol, and Schoolboy Q formed Black Hippie, a hip-hop collective that will go on later to make a dent in the hip-hop industry. Throughout 2010, Lamar toured with Tech 9 and J-Rock on the Independent Grind Tour. On September 14, 2010, he released the visuals for P&P &P 1.5, a song taken from his mixtape Overly Dedicated, featuring his black hippie cohort Absol. On the same date, Lamar released Overly Dedicated to digital retailers under Top Dog Entertainment, and later on September 23rd, released it for free online. The project fared well enough to enter the United States Billboard Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart, where it peaked at number 72. As a fan of Kendrick, this was personally my first introduction to his music. In early 2011, Lamar was included in XXL's annual Top 10 Freshman Class. Later that year, he would release his first independent album titled Section 80, which was reached with critical acclaim. In August 2011, while performing at a West Los Angeles concert, Lamar was dubbed the new king of the West Coast by Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and The Game, which he said was a big moment in his career for him. Lamar's major label debut, Good Kid, Mad City, was released on October 22, 2012. The album was met with critical acclaim and debuted at number two in the U.S., selling 242,100 copies in its first week. Later that year, Fuse TV listed Lamar's single, Backseat Freestyle among the top 40 songs of 2012. In a few months' time, the album was certified gold by the Recording Industry Association of America. Hip Hop DX named Lamar MC of the Year for their 2012 Year in Honors. This album was when our new Kendrick was a star in the making and is still one of my personal favorites to this day. On October 15, 2013, Lamar won five awards at the BET Hip Hop Awards, including Album of the Year and Lyricist of the Year, which he had also won the year before. He was also nominated for seven Grammys, but didn't win in any category. Many people agree that he was robbed of his Grammy wins that year because he had, without a doubt, the best album in any genre of music that year. In early 2015, Lamar won Best Rap Performance and Best Rap Song for his song I at the 57th Annual Grammy Awards. On February 9th, 2015, he released his third album's second single, titled The Black or the Berry. Originally expected to be released on March 23, 2015, 
His new album, To Pimp a Butterfly, was released a week early on March 16, 2015, to rave reviews. The album debuted atop the U.S. Billboard 200 chart, selling 324,000 copies in its first week, and established Spotify's global first-day streaming record of 9.6 million. Lamar was later featured on the cover of Rolling Stone with editor Josh Ells, writing he's arguably the most talented rapper of his generation. This was the album that showed how gifted Kendrick was with displaying both compelling storytelling as well as impeccable lyricism. Lamar won five Grammys at the 58th ceremony, including Best Rap Album for To Pimp a Butterfly. It was long overdue but well deserved for the greatest artist of our generation. In 2017, Lamar released his fourth studio album, Damn, and was hailed with critical acclaim as well as massive streaming numbers. This album showed how advanced his versatility as a rapper was and introduced fans to multiple new flows as well as displaying his impressive writing skills. In 2018, Marvel introduced the superhero the Black Panther to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This was the first Black Marvel superhero to have their own standalone film, and it was going to be a big moment in film history. The film allowed Kendrick Lamar to produce and curate the entire album for the soundtrack of the movie. If the movie wasn't already big enough, the added hype of having one of the most successful and talented artists of our generation producing the album made it all the more necessary. Kendrick Lamar performed at the 60th Annual Grammy Awards. He was also nominated for seven Grammys that night and ended up winning five of them. After this performance, Lamar would not release any new music for another four years. Kendrick Lamar took a short gig acting on the popular star's drama, Power, depicting a Dominican drug addict named Laces. The opportunity arose from Kendrick's friendship with rapper 50 Cent, executive producer of the show. Following a four-year hiatus, Lamar teased his final album under the TDE label on his website, Oklahoma.com, along with posts on his social media accounts. Lamar later re-emerged with the single Family Ties alongside his cousin and label mate, Baby Keem. He also appeared on Keem's album, The Melodic Blue, on the songs Range Brothers and Vent, as well as Family Ties. Kendrick Lamar is also confirmed as a performer for the 2020 Super Bowl LVI halftime performance. He will be performing alongside Dr. Dre, Mary J. Blige, Eminem, and Snoop Dogg. Kendrick Lamar has stated that Tupac Shakur, the Notorious B.I.G., Jay-Z, Nas, and Eminem are his top five favorite rappers. Tupac Shakur is his biggest influence and inf has influenced his music as well as his day-to-day -day lifestyle. On March 5th, 2020, Kendrick Lamar and Dave Free announced the launching of P.G. Lang, which is described as a multilingual, artist-friendly service company. In a press release, Dave Free claimed that the company is not a record label, a movie studio, or a publishing house. This is something new. In the overstimulated time, we are focused on cultivating raw expression from grassroots partnerships. Kendrick teamed up with Nike to fulfill his lifelong dream of creating and having his very own custom shoe. As of today, Kendrick Lamar has received a total of 13 Grammy Awards, cementing him as one of the best rappers and artists of all time. He was also included in Billboard's Top 10 Rappers of All Time list in 2016. Kendrick Lamar was engaged to his high school sweetheart, Whitney Alford, in April of 2015. The couple welcomed their first baby in 2019. Kendrick Lamar has hinted that his last album under the label TDE is coming very soon and should arrive before 2021 is over. I'm very excited that he's releasing music again because the music industry simply just isn't the same without him.